while he was captive, God gave him favor to encourage the various churches, to encourage the various leaders, amen, and, and to, 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 to raise funds for the poor and that the support of the ministry, praise God, amen. He encouraged Timothy and other leaders and placed them in their positions and encouraged them. All this he did with, un, under captivity. So it lets us know, sometimes we might not be where we would want to be. We might feel like we got kind of a hindrance. But go forth. Go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. See, like something is slowing you down. Everything is not in its right place. It's not in its full potential. It's not exactly what you want it to be. Go forth. Don't stop. Go far. If you wait till everything becomes right, you'll never accomplish what God has purpose for you to do. Naturally or spiritually. You have to step out in faith. You have to be motivated. And sometimes, like David, we got to motivate ourselves. Amen. When you face your accusers, you got to be motivated. I'm still going to stand. I'm still going to do God's work. Amen. Most of his, I would say, evangelizing. Now, I know a lot of people say that was a sickness. Amen. But most of wherever he went, hell was raised. And he even brought it up in the scripture. He said, a messenger of Satan came to come to buffet me. Now, the messenger of Satan is a person. For those who want to take it as a sickness, because they said he suffered with different illnesses, even with his eyesight, amen. We won't judge you with that, praise God. But if you listen to one of the scriptures, he said, messenger of Satan, that's a person. Mm -hmm. That's demonically influenced to stop him and his tracks, to discourage him. And as we often say, the greatest discouragement is discouragement. One of the greatest tools the enemy uses against us is discouragement. Brings that spirit of heaviness, as the Bible calls it. Science calls it depression, anxiety. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It is a real thing. Elijah went through it. He went through it so that he even told God, I'm the only one. <laughs> How many times we feel like we're the only one? Yeah. Hey, come on here, somebody. Now, you can only feel your own pain, but you ain't the only one going through something. You ain't the only one that's experienced that. Amen. And God had to remind Elijah, because he already told him, I have 7,000, 7,000 that we're not bowed down. Amen. We get that Elijah said, I'm the only one, Lord. <laughs> And it's natural. It's natural. But then the Holy Spirit reminds us, no, you're not the only one. You're not the only one saved. You're not the only one standing up for righteousness. You're not the only one living holy. Come on here, somebody. You're not the only one trying to do something for your family. Help your family. Encourage your family. Your community. Praise God. You're not the only one. Praise God. Amen. And the enemy bring these thoughts to us to discourage us, to paralyze us, to freeze us in our tracks. But we